And we're back, getting ready to read chapter three of Hachiko, also known as Hachi. I hope you like the book so far. Um, I really love this book. I don't know. I feel like I really read a lot of dog books, but I just love dogs. And I love how they're so, like, you're their only person, animals. There is nobody else. And they trust you. They love you. And I just love books that are heartwarming about animals. So maybe you have some recommendations for the next book that I can read. Chapter 3. Professor Uno packed up his books and left his classroom in a hurry. He was so distracted by thoughts of Hachi, he almost collided with a delivery boy on a bicycle who was balancing a round tray stacked high with lunch boxes and rice bowls above his shoulder. Excuse me. The professor lowered his head in apology as the delivery boy swerved out of his way. Hoping Hachi had not caused the station master any trouble, the professor hurried along to board the train that would take him from the university back to Shibaiwe Station. Mr. Yashiqua looked up at the big round clock hanging from the ceiling in the center of the train station. It was almost three o'clock. Soon, Professor Uno would arrive, and the station master would have to tell him what had happened. The professor had trusted him to take care of his dog, and he had not done his job. All day long, he had asked people waiting for their trains if they had seen Hachi. He is a young golden brown Akitakin with a white patch of fur on his face, the station master said over and over. Every hour or so, the station master went down to ask the food vendors if they had noticed Hachi sniffing around their booths in search of a snack. He, brought, he bought a bowl of rice from a vendor, quickly gobbled down the wide, oh, not, it wasn't rice, udon from a vendor, quickly gobbled down the wide noodles, and then spent the better part of his noontime break searching the neighborhood for Hachi. But he had not been able to find him. After about five minutes before three o'clock, the station master walked out onto the platform and pulled at the tip of his red-brimmed hat. He looked to his right, the direction from which the train would arrive. There was no sign of it yet. The station master turned and looked to his left. He blinked once, then shook his head and blinked again, because he could not believe what he saw a golden brown Akitakin. The station master rushed over to the dog. Hachi, he asked. The dog thumped his tail once at the sound of his name. Where have you been? The station master asked, rubbing the dog's neck and shoulders. I have been worried about you. Hachi stared into his eyes, mute. Well, never mind, Mr. Yashiqua said, giving Hachi a pat on the head. I am very happy that you are here. And just as the words left his mouth, the, tra the train entered the station and ground to a halt. Professor Uno was the first one to step off. Hello, little friend, he called, his voice full of happiness. Hachi ran to his master, licked each of his fingers, and then spun in circles before him. Yasu and his mother followed the professor off the train. Look, son, Yasu laughed. The professor's dog is making himself dizzy. He is dizzy with joy said Mrs. Takasha with a smile. When Hachi stopped spinning, Yasu called, Here, Hachi, and held out his hand. The dog looked at the boy and wagged his tail, but he stayed at the side of his master. Thank you so much for watching him, the professor said to the station master. It was very kind of you to do me the favor. You are very welcome, said the station master. Was Hachi any trouble, the professor asked. Mr. Yashiqua looked at the dog and lifted his brows. See if you can see that there. Hachi looked back at him with his mouth slightly open and his pink tongue hanging out almost as though he was laughing. I do not know if he was trouble, the station master said. Hachi left the station a few minutes after your train pulled away from the platform. I tried to catch him, but he ran too fast. I asked many people and searched for him during my lunch hour, but I could not find him. And then out of nowhere, Mr. Yashiqua gestured toward the train station's entrance. He returned just before three o'clock. It is though he knew when you would arrive. The professor looked down at Hachi and beamed. Dogs could not tell time. Or could they? That is most interesting, he said to the station master. I am sorry he caused you so much trouble. There is no need to apologize, said the station master, because the story has a happy ending. I thank you again, said the professor, bowing his head. Then he turned to Hachi. I always knew you were smart, he said. Now I know you are even smarter than I thought. Little friend, you are the smartest dog in all of Japan. And that completes, completes chapter three.